That's that's the best YouTube B-roll though. <laughs> Airplanes and trains and ambulances going by. In this case, it's a motorcycle. Uh, so I should probably tell you why I'm rolling these wet naps. That's for this Dish of the Day episode. It's over there on the menu. We have the best part of the curried fish. This, uh... <laughs> Relentless. And roll again. It's like, it's, no, no keep, keep it, keep it. It's like they know when we hit record. Uh, so I have a halibut collar, a whole collar, two heads of two different halibut, cheek still attached, uh, slightly cured. There's a paste on them that I'm gonna make into the sauce. So tomato, ginger, garlic, a bunch of different spices. Um, and that's just gonna get roasted, uh, served next to a, a plate full of asparagus pickles that are lime pickled. Uh, what else do we have on that dish? Oh, Lucy, Lucy's got some uh, parantas fly, uh, frying there. You might remember from last season of, of Dish of the Day. That one was with crab last time. Uh, we're doing halibut on this one. So the idea being, and the reason that I'm rolling these, is because we're going to ask the guests to eat this whole dish with their hands. This is going to be kind of a break in the menu. Uh, there's not going to be any, there, there's still going to be color on the table if they want, but I think it's going to be kind of a fun interactive uh, play on, on a, 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 the best part of the curried fish. That's essentially what we're going for. Dinner hasn't started yet, so we're going to cut to Joel's, Joe's B-roll now of uh, the finished dish. That's exactly what you want to see. How's it going? What's up? Good to see you folks. This dish is a special one because I've served a riff on this combo before and it went really well and this is actually a dish of the day example where the execution of what I did for this particular dinner didn't go so great. And I say that because the ideal for this dish was to have people break the mold of traditional western dining where you use the bread, you eat with your hands, you don't use a fork and knife. But because I had still a share plate in front of everybody with a fork and knife, everybody just kind of went to the mean and ended up doing what I didn't want them to do. So what I learned there was if you want people to do something, give them only one option. Flavor-wise and texture-wise, I think it was awesome. I really liked that I did a last-minute decision to do the shingled zucchini on it. I think that broke up the texture a little bit. I think if I would have had access to open fire, giving the fish a touch over that would have also been really impactful, but because there was like a broiling situation, I could still get a char on the fish. This venue in Seattle in particular was really hard to cook out of because the ventilation isn't great and also the kitchen appliances are kind of wonky. The woman who owns the space is sponsored by Kitchen and so everything in that space is KitchenAid appliances. And I feel like sometimes it's more built for the home cook than the professional. And I always find myself running into these hiccups in this space because I try to be ambitious because it's such a beautiful space to cook in, but then it ends up biting me in the butt. I think what's also cool about this dish is that you get to see a throwback from season one of Dish of the Day where we're using prantas in a tasting menu that's not just a snack, it's actually part of a larger, almost main course. But kind of the larger macro idea I want to get out of this dish is the frustration I have with Indian food on the fine dining end of the spectrum. I find that a lot of chefs will take these home dishes, the ones that you get in a large bowl served to you, and they'll just serve a tiny portion of it and call it fine dining, and I don't necessarily think that's always the best way to interpret it. I think, and this is one man's perspective, that the value of doing a tasting menu or having something viewed through a fine dining perspective is that you can take it and distill it to the nugget of it, the ideal bite that you want someone to have and serve someone that. And then there's that art of navigating the portion size so that people stop one bite before where they think they would be satisfied. You leave them wanting more. And that's how I position this dish. This was the only one where everybody got to participate interactively, family style almost, on the dish together. Everything else in the tasting menu was individual.
individually plated. I'm really having an awesome time introducing those kind of speed ramps into my tasting menu so it's not just plated course after plated course after plated course. And that even extends to this dish. The last time I served a dish of this name, it was a plated course. That being said, I'm probably gonna try something again next time. I really like the distilled nugget of this idea. I just haven't seen the perfect execution of it yet. As per usual, if you have thoughts to share or any questions you wanna ask, please leave them in the comments down below. Also, if you have things you want me to cover while I'm in the moment of these dish of the day shootings when I'm at the dinner itself, please leave those thoughts down below too because I'd love to know what you folks wanna know in the moment. As per usual, thank you so much for your attention. My name is Justin Kana. Have a good one. What's up guys? Welcome back to the vlog. Today we are going to show you how to make homemade Hot Pockets. Hubert, what did you do with your hair, dog?